I'm going to start with diets, which uh, we left off kind of the last two times. Uh, we still don't get a good answer from people because they're confusing the issue. And this is what I presented, okay? Went like this. Uh, <laughs> um, humans evolved over time, right? And if we take them back maybe two million, three million years ago, uh, we were some kind of, or our ancestor was some kind of monkey, you could say, some proto-hominid, okay? Over time, we evolved, and we invented spears, or we discovered that this was a good tool. And I'm saying we use those tools to hunt animals, okay, and to defend ourselves. For most of that time, uh, around the time of Homo erectus, all the way to uh, modern man, primarily, through that, those two million years, we were hunters more than gatherers. I think uh, above 90% of our food was meat. And then lately, uh, we've switched over uh, to veggies, uh, which was maybe anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 years ago when we became more gatherers and later on farmers. Okay, so that's uh, in general terms what I'm suggesting. And essentially, I'm saying that we grew up for most of our uh, time as carnivores, okay? Uh, does this have anything to do with health? Does it have to do anything with killing poor little animals and uh, keeping them in corrals and in little cages? Absolutely not. That's politics, that's religion, that's belief. We don't care about that. We just want to get to the bottom of the issue, which is what is our natural diet? It's got nothing to do with what is healthy. It has nothing to do with what we have today. In other words, today we are, like I was explaining the other day, uh, we have a 10 to 1 ratio in the amount of veggies we eat on the plant, veggies and fruits, etc., that we eat on the planet compared to meats there's almost a 10 to 1 ratio. So 90% of, you could say more or less, of what we eat today are um, vegetables, are plants, and not meat. So today we're omnivores, but heavily sided on the, uh, you know, on the seesaw, we're on the side of veggies. That's essentially where we're at today. But that's not where we were, uh, you know, a million or two million years ago. That was the point. The point is, what is our natural diet? We have, uh, you know, uh, these uh, canines. They're not very long like in other predators, but we have them. <laughs> and those are, you know, Mother Nature or God or whoever put them there because of meat. Okay, that's why we have those there. So we are definitely meat eaters. The question is, what were we throughout most of our evolution? And I would say that at least uh, in the last two million years, we were primarily meat eaters. And then at the end, we switched over to veggies. So we are all we we have pretty much been omnivores through all, all this time. And we are still omnivores. But the point is, what is our natural diet? And I'm suggesting we're we originated more towards meat than towards veggies, okay? That's simply our evolution. It's got nothing to do with what you like, whether it's healthy, whether you like killing animals. None of that has any bearing on the question, okay? And so what does one person ask? He says, we are apes and apes eat mostly plants with some meat. We humans should normally eat 60% plant, 40% meat. Again, we don't care about the shoulds, okay? It's not a question of shoulds. Okay, it's a question of what is our natural diet? That's the question we're trying to answer. Another fellow says, uh, if you can explain science in simple words, the mechanism by which diseases manifest in humans. This has nothing to do with diseases. The question is, what is our natural diet? How can we get people to understand the question? So the fellow continues, says, why do humans that are eating omnivore, carnivore diets develop... Um, Cancers, diabetes, etc., etc. Well, it's got nothing to do with disease. We don't care if it's good for you or bad for you, whether it's eating meat is good, whether eating meat is bad or veggies or whatever. It's got nothing to do with your opinion. We have doctors on one side and people also, uh, laymen who 
vouch for Meats and others who don't. That's all we have. Those are all essentially opinions, okay? And irrelevant anyways, because we don't care what's good for you. We don't care what is healthy, okay? That's not the question. The question is, what is our natural diet? What have we eaten in the last 2 million, 3 million years? And the answer, I think, is primarily meat. We were carnivores. We were meat eaters. We were killers of animals. We wouldn't be here if we did not kill animals uh, throughout the Paleolithic. Okay, that's that's the point. Okay, and again, uh, what diet is right? Uh, unless you can do that, then fighting over what diet is right is fruitless. Yeah, it's not a question of what diet is right. We don't care about what's right or wrong. Those are opinions, and uh, you know these people what they do. Essentially, they're into politics. Okay, they're into religion. They want to shove down your throat some propaganda about some type of food, and we don't care about that. We care. This is a science site. We just try to get down to the questions to see if we can answer some of these basic questions. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, this is the what I propose again, and I'm saying that for the last two million, maybe three million years. We were primarily meat eaters. Uh, we switched lately, and I think it's in great measure because um, it's more efficient to feed people with grains, primarily, and other veggies. Uh, so, you know, I don't think you can feed 8 billion people with meat because you would have to have more cows, fish, birds, whatever, uh, than humans to do that and you would have to feed them. So it's not practical anymore to uh, be hunters, you know, kill or, uh, you know, um, if, if you have corrals, if, if you uh, keep livestock, etc. cetera, uh, there's no way you can feed the world with that anymore, okay? So yeah, uh, if anything, it's an economic and a question uh, issue or a question of efficiency. Okay, uh, just, for your information, here you have uh, teeth of T-Rex versus the t uh, teeth of Triceratops. And I think you can tell there what each one ate <laughs> just by looking at their teeth. So teeth are a good way of showing or, or trying to get to the bottom of the question, what is our natural diet? What do our teeth look like? And I was looking at the Homo erectus and I was hoping to find, you know, bigger um, canines and that wasn't the case. Uh, Homo erectus uh, had pretty much the same mouth. In other words, the teeth size was more or less like ours. You know, the canines do not stick out like, you know, a, a, a snake or whatever. And in fact, here, here you can see some of these skeletons here. There's a dog, it's got a big canines. Uh, snake, even bigger, right? Um, shark. Uh, doesn't have really canines, but have all these sharp teeth and point it inwards so that they can, you know, take a chunk and rip it off you. <laughs> and then you have the cow. Oh, no, no danger there. You can see that you're not going to die because a cow eats you. Okay? <laughs> if anything, uh, the bull will horn you, but you won't die because of uh, a bite from a cow. It could happen, I guess, you know, <laughs> but that's not their primary defense. That's that's a predator's uh, attack or whatever. And here you have uh, two other animals, the gorilla and um, chimp. Turns out the gorilla is primarily or almost, I would say, 90% a herbivore. Eats some termites and other bugs, but in general, in general, does not eat meat, but they can eat meat, okay? Um, in comparison to like the chimp there, the chimp does eat meat. In fact, uh, chimps cannibalize other chimps and eat them, you know, they, they, they kill them and eat them. And that's not typical among the uh, bigger apes like the uh, gorillas. But uh, again, the question is, were they originally uh, meat eaters? Did they switch over to veggies? You know, this is something for you to investigate you know if you want to invest if you want to get to the bottom of what is the natural diet of some of these animals and if it's veggies why does he have you know these big fangs <laughs> right so again food for thought it's uh stuff that you should be looking at if you're interested in the subject
Let's move on to another issue, related issue, and that's that I presented this the other day. This is a map that I put in my book, Neanderthal book, and um, it essentially shows that Homo erectus, about maybe anywhere between a million years, a million two, I'm sorry, almost two million years ago, to about 300,000 years ago, roamed the planet. And my argument is that they came out of Africa. It's an out of Africa um, theory or assumption. And they ended up uh, in merry old England about at least 800,000 years ago. We have footprints and some uh, flint uh, tools here, etc. Okay, so uh, uh, one, uh, so the question is, you know, did they come out of Africa, or uh, was it like a multi-regional issue, which is known as the multi-regional theory, where humans developed, or Homo erectus, at least at that level, originated in different parts of the world simultaneously or in parallel, okay? And which is true, the humans uh, or our ancestors, right, originate in Africa or in several places at once. And uh, one fellow says the following, he says, uh, a species will have the highest diversity in the region which it originates. Africa had the highest genetic diversity of all human populations. Americans have the lowest. This means that we originated in Africa. Okay, so this is this what this fellow found out there, or this is what he subscribes to. And I do have a problem with this, not because uh, humans did not originate in Africa, but the reason given. And it's got to do with this, another comment by another fellow. Uh, which is uh, the out of Africa, uh, the molecular clock issue. He says, it seems that the whole out of Africa stems out of the molecular clock method of dating. First of all, I'll say absolutely not. That's not where it originates. That is another theory, okay, called the molecular clock, to which I personally do not subscribe, okay. But it assumes that mutation rate is constant across species. Well, it has already been shown many times that it is not the case. The multi-regional hypothesis instead is based on the fossil record. And that's the one I subscribe to, okay? I say that it has to do with um, fossil record primarily. And no, that's not what the multi-regional uh, hypothesis leads to. The, multi the fossil record leads to the out of Africa. And I want to make a point of that. It leads to the out of Africa hypothesis, not to the multi-regional, okay? And uh, I'll provide a little bit of an example today, okay? But there's a third alternative, okay, stemming from this understanding of the uh, feasibility or viability of the molecular clock where ancient humans would have come out of Asia. Uh-huh. Discovered by a Chinese scientist, now that's a <laughs> a little bit nationalistic, right? Notably, notably, the idea that genetic diversity is a sign of recent evolution in low selectivity and or heavy in pathogens. Well, low gen genetic diversity, a sign of evolution under harsh selective pressures, favorizing, favoring, right? More specific genes. Okay, so what's the issue? The issue is that uh, the Chinese, and I wrote about this in my book as well, the Neanderthal book, uh, Chinese want to claim that humans originated in China, okay? Uh, there's a lot of nationalism behind that theory, okay? The uh, Communist Party is also pushing for that theory. Imagine if they could prove to the world that humans originated in China, right? And as of today, and again, because of the finds, the sites that we have out there, there is no evidence for that theory. Okay, or for that assumption, you're just going to take it as an assumption. This is what I put in my book, okay, for you to see. And it's, uh, th these are the Chinese finds as of uh, the date that I wrote the book. I think it was 2015, 16, something like that. Um, and you can see there are the sites in China. And at the erectus level, Okay, which goes from anywhere from 1.9 to uh, maybe 800,000 years ago. That's primarily the range for erectus. After that, we have a Heidelberg type creature. Uh, and again, these uh, lines are very abstract, uh, very opinionated. Uh, it's just to give a sense of that there's been a change 
from one type of human or humanoid or hominid from one type to another. Okay? And the oldest ones that you'll find in China, and uh, you got to qualify this quite a bit, okay, but are the ones that Nihe Wan and the Shi Hu Du, okay? Those are the oldest ones that we found in China. Um, the dates have uh, shifted quite a bit, okay? That's one issue, uh, different opinions. Then the question whether any of the uh, stone tools found, especially the oldest ones, are natural or whether they're man-made, that was another issue. And we haven't really found many bones. Uh, in fact, I think none at all. It's just tools that they found. And again, the tools and the stones, uh, according to some, were just natural stones and have nothing at all to do with man-made stones. Uh, the closest you can probably get is maybe around a, a million years ago, and that's the uh, Gong Wangling, uh, the uh, Lanshan, uh, which is around 800,000 years ago, which is about the switch over from Erectus to Heidelberg. That's about the uh, age of the, really the documented, uh, verified, right, that we have a, a something there, a, you know, a, a skeleton, a, a head. Now, China has not um, excavated as much as Africa. Uh, so, you know, you have to con take that into consideration. The question is, as of today, there is no evidence that uh, uh, Erectus was in um, China any time before 800,000 years ago. There are some uh, very debatable uh, evidence that's out there. Uh, they're still excavating. We have to wait for more results. But if you compare that against Africa, which is 1.9 million years ago, and even before that, you got 2.3 million years ago, you have Homo habilis, right? Which is the first uh, creature that is making tools, standing up and making tools. Uh, I doubt very much you're going to find any habilis anywhere in China. But again, uh, maybe it's too early to and make that call. My suggestion is that humans did originate in Africa and began, began to roam the planet from there. Some went as far as China and Indonesia. Uh, we've got uh, several, couple at least, not several, but a couple of um, uh, sites that were excavated where they found, you know, a skull. And you'll find a lot more in Africa. And if, uh, uh, they also, uh, this Erectus also went west and reached the British Isles, which I talked about the other day. About 800,000 years ago, you find uh, footprints and um, some stone tools and bones of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, mammoths in England. And so, you know, you have to think that, you know, Erectus did not originate in England. I think he originated in Africa and went to England. And I think the same thing happened to China.